Big round of applause for our dignitaries, everybody. I hope everyone's well seated. Uh, as our moderator, we would like to have Mr. Firwani to guide us through the proceedings, if possible. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Do you need a mic or? All right. Can we have uh, the console get the deck for Mr. Firwani, please? Hi everyone, welcome to the panel. Uh, it, is, it is something quite emotional for me, because I just realized today that I actually participated in the first ever FIKI report, uh, way back in, I think, 2002, where I wrote one small section of that report. Uh, and now, I think, 21 years later, uh, I think it's awesome that you know, we have uh, a much bigger, thicker report. And, and I think what's more interesting is just the composition of this panel, which is the same panel that we've been having for these 20 years when the report gets released, has changed so much that I don't think there's any sector ever which is as dynamic as media and entertainment has changed so fast and is just so diverse. I mean, you look at banking, you look at oil and gas, you look at manufacturing, they're all great sectors. But, you know, when you go right down into the media sector, there are 18 sub-segments. And all 18 segments work very differently from each other. So I think what I'm going to do in this panel, it's, it's the title of the report, as you saw, was hashtag reinvent. And what I'm trying to do, I'm going to set the context about five minutes by taking you through some of the key findings from the report. And then we'll move into this panel, which has some of the most varied and amazing people. I've gotten to know them over the last few years, a lot of them. And I think they are fantastic, a very diverse panel. So, if we could have the slide deck put up, um, and I could get a clicker. Consul, can we have the deck uh, Mr. Firvani is uh, requesting for, please? Is that uh, on standby? Is it ready? We are not getting it up. Have a seat, sir. We'll get this in, uh, ready in a second. Yeah, I see sari cheese hoti rehti hai. It's okay, we can let it by. Okay, and Ashish ji, I thought that it was very difficult for me in the morning. For many people, I think that their eyes are not open yet. But it's a little bit of a delay. But, uh, but I would like to uh, introduce our dignitaries once again, you know, uh, till we get everything sorted at the console. Is everything in place, guys? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't you join me, beautiful Daljeet? We'd like to introduce everybody once more till we uh, get a proper introduction of everybody and then we can ask Mr. Firwani again to do a take two. Sir, we are here, so we are doing a lot of takes. Unfortunately, we will also say that we will do a take two so that we can get a clear, crisp edit. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, so we'll introduce everybody. Uh-huh. 
It's an honor to invite Shri Sanjay Jaju, Secretary of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Our esteemed panelists, Mr. Gaurav Dwedi, Chief Executive Officer, Prasar Bharti. Mr. Kevin Vaz. <laughs> Mr. Kevin Vaz, Chair of FIKI Media and Entertainment Committee and Chief Executive of Broadcast Entertainment at Viacom 18 Private Limited. Ms. Sandhya, Ms. Sandhya, Ms. Sandhya Devanathan, Co-Chair of Wiki Media and Entertainment Committee and Vice President and Head of Meta India. <laughs> Mr. Arjun Nowar, Co-Chair of Wiki Media and Entertainment Committee and Senior Vice President and General Manager of India and South Asia at, at Warner, Warner Bros. Brothers Discovery. Discovery. <laughs> Mr. Sushant Sriram, Country Head of Amazon, Prime Video. <laughs> Mr. Shripad Ashtekar, Chairman and Managing Director of Signpost India. <laughs> Facilitating this discussion, we have our distinguished and very patient Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ashish, Ashish Birwani, ladies and gentlemen. Partner at Ernst and Young, serving as our moderator, and we continue to wait. Yeah, we continue. Uh, if everything is okay at the console, guys, please give us a thumbs up. excitement nervousness Extremely sorry for this delay. I think uh, the morning lag is going on and I think we can all be patient. Please have some uh, coffee, tea, water and uh, let's just continue to wait for a while, please. Okay, I see you, Karan, there, just leaving me alone. Calling me all beautiful, calling me here and just putting me in a spot and leaving. I don't think that's kind. Uh, sorry, yeah. Dool se I need my selfie. Right I think we're up finally. Yeah, we're finally up. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause once again for the first session of Picky Frames 2024. Okay, Let's have I some excitement, guys. Okay, the bad news is we lost about four minutes. The good news is I can speak that much less. So you won't get that bored. Okay, going straight into it. Um, I think the, the headline numbers, like we saw, we as an industry, uh, can I have the monitor with the data on it, please? Thanks. Uh, as an industry, we grew from 2.1 trillion to 2.3 trillion. Uh, that's 2.1 lakh crores to 2.3 lakh crores. That's an 8% growth. Uh, but I think some of the headlines of, of the growth are that uh, we are now fairly and firmly 21% above our pre-pandemic levels which is something that we crossed last year just about barely, but now we've, we've grown much ahead of our pre-pandemic 2019 levels. TV is still the largest segment that we have in the country. Despite what you hear about digital, it is still number one. Uh, and and the, the real problem when I sit back and look at it is our advertising to GDP ratio, which is still an abysmal 0.3% and falling. Uh, and that's really saddening because most developed economies, we, we are now in the top five countries in the world, the minimum ad GDP ratio for those countries is 0.6% and goes all the way to 1%. We are still at 0.3%, which only shows that there is still a lot of headroom for growth, and that's what we expect to see over the next few years. Um, now, interestingly, the industry grew by 17,300 crores last year, and 70% of that growth came from new media, which are the orange bars that you see, uh, that's digital and uh, online gaming. But there was another story, which is that it's not just digital, every other segment also grew, with the exception of television, which had a pretty weak first half, and therefore de grew just about 1.8%. But every other segment grew, and therefore, I think if you see the report, there's a foreword by Alia Bhatt, which has a wonderful headline. It says, it's not the digital divide, it's a digital multiplier. So what we're actually seeing is that digital is growing, but so are all the other traditional media segments as well. Um, but it was a strange year 
And when I say strange year, it, there was one big difference last year than any other year, and I've been tracking this for the last 15 to 20 years. What we normally note is when the Indian nominal GDP grows, so long as it grows above 4%, media grows at one and a half to two times that. Last year was the first year in the last 15 years, with the exception of one COVID year, that the Indian nominal GDP grew 9%, but advertising grew just 8%. And it's, the, it's basically a reflection of three things. Firstly, there were supply chain worries because of war that impacted a lot of ad spend. Secondly, a lot of the VC funding, which kind of tightened during 2023, impacted ad sales as well. A lot of the high yield categories that were there spending D2C brands that were being built cut down a lot of their spends as well. And these are therefore the factors which actually go to show that now Indian advertising is far more dependent on international advertising and, and the international scenario, rather, than ever before. And we have to look at more global trends when we're looking at the Indian industry as well. Um, there was a huge fast impact. And one of the guys responsible is on this stage. I will not name him. <laughs> All right. Um, um, I think you, you can see the left side of this graph. You'll see there's been a steady growth in number of OTD paying subscriptions. For the first time, we saw a bit coming down. We lost 2 million paid subscriptions. We lost 2 million paying households. But what we did get is a massive boom uh, in terms of free ad-supported streaming. All right? I, think, uh, I think what happened in 2023 is something that I could not even envisage two years back. It's created this massive growth. You have more than you know, almost 500 million people watching cricket on digital platforms today, something completely, you know, out of whack. It's probably the largest sporting audience on digital in the world today. And that's something that had a massive impact as well. Uh, the number of subscriptions also interestingly increased per household. So on average, when a household starts subscribing, and we have 43 million households in India that subscribe to SVOD services today on OTT, the average number of subscriptions increased from 1.9 to 2.26. And therefore, what we are seeing right now is a lot of concentrated uptake of SWOD in the top 45 odd household, million households of the country. Um, experiential was the other big theme of the year. Um, while the industry, overall industry grew at 8%, anything experiential grew at 18% on average, which is whether it's going out and watching a movie, whether it's online gaming, uh, whether it's a live event that's happening, or it's out, the out-of-home industry as well. Uh, in terms of Bollywood, it had its best ever year. And I shouldn't say Bollywood, I should say the Indian film industry. Theatrical revenues crossed 12,000 crores for the first time. So I applaud all of you guys here in the audience for making that happen. I think that's a remarkable, I mean, one and a half billion dollars of domestic theatrical revenue is a massive, massive achievement. Um, and 36 films crossed that magic number of 100 crores. Uh, again, that's the highest ever in the history of India. So again, fantastic performance on film. The other big number which is growing and growing, and sometimes I get scared calling it out because it's growing so fast, is that we have 450 million people who play online games in this very young country of ours. To put that in perspective, that's higher than the reach of print, and it's higher than the reach of radio. So there's this new animal in town, if I may call it, which is so much fun and so addictive and so wonderful. Uh, and it's growing at an amazing pace. It's already the fifth largest segment of the Indian m &E sector and will soon become uh, number three uh, by 2026. So that's all and everything experiential, everything out of the home is growing very, very fast. But the industry has horizontalized. TV channels have digital, print newspapers go digital, Radio companies do events, everything, every company that we've been tracking is doing everything. And therefore, we've reclassified the industry into four basic areas, which is video, experiential, text, and audio. And as you can see, video is now a lion's share. It's 67%. But surprisingly, we found that experiential, out of the home, is 22%. And there you have it. You know, you have 89% coming out of these two segments. And that's only going to stay as strong as India's per capita income increases, it's just going to keep growing. The key trend in video that we see over the next few years uh, is, is that it's no longer going to be you know, about which distribution channel is being used. It's going to be about the size of the screen. There's only going to be large screens and small screens. We are at about 750 million screens today. 
And by 2030, we expect this number to be very close to a billion screens in India. Out of that, three quarters of the screens are going to be small screens on your mobile phone. And therefore, it, it has a great future, a great potential for short video and snackable content, social media. I think there's going to be a massive uptick in that field. We, we can expect to see it grow by at least 40 to 50 percent between now and 2030. On the television or large screen size, I think, again, there's going to be a lot of churn. Uh, ...builds when you do LLM, so all of that is also another area of focus. The third is just Gen AI, right? So you'll see more and more people being able to use Gen AI in a very meaningful way on our platforms uh, to actually do background changes, for example, or uh, text variations. You can test different forms of creatives. You can uh, change the background. You can do image expansion. Uh, an early test that we did said that advertisers save around five hours using Gen AI tools on our platform. That translates to one month increase in productivity in a year. So that's on AI, right? So I think m &E's, you, as a sector, we should be thinking about what that means. The second is just Reels. Um, it's become pretty much the dominant form of consumption on our platform. Um, and 97% uh, of people, I think, that we surveyed in India said they had shared reels. I think this recent pre-wedding also saw a lot of traffic on Instagram where everyone was sharing a reel, right? So you could see uh, how trends are formed around reels and how people are sharing. And, and with cricket, a massive uptake of cricket and reels. Yes. Phenomenal. In fact, during ICC, I think we saw 18 billion, uh, they talked about that number, which was pretty huge, of short form video being shared across our platforms. Uh, the third thing I would say is, you know, it's not just Reels that is powering growth, it's also business messaging. Uh, we're seeing at least 60% of Indians message a business, especially on WhatsApp in the country. So again, that has implications. So if you're thinking about reach uh, to hundreds of millions of people, think about short form video and think about messaging on how you want to communicate and engage with your audiences. Wow, that, that, is, that is truly fascinating. And again, like I said, when I look at the composition of this panel, <laughs> There was nothing like this five years back when we did this panel. And it is so interesting to see how the industry has changed. Arjun, I'm going to jump over to you. Um, so many consumers, so many screens heading towards 750 million smartphone screens, right? For a company like yours, Kids and Factual, where do you, you, know, where do you envision the future of this? What do you think will contribute to success? So if I just talk about the kids in the factual space, it contributes to about 7% viewership of the TV viewing audience and they'll continue to kind of be relevant, punch above its weight and try to move towards the double digit mark. Uh, I think success, just like for other genres, for the kids in factual space is gonna be predicated on having a deep understanding of changing consumer preferences, identifying who your customer is, and then being able to tailor, make IPs or content or story arcs that are relevant to them, that delight and inspire them, and they find endearing. Um, so while, while this is stable stakes, I think success is also gonna f follow if we have a deep understanding of what's happening out in the ecosystem when you talk about the 750 million screens that are consuming. It's not all on the big screen, traditionally where network television is watched. So we usually focus on the what, who, what, and where. Like who's consuming us, what kind of content are they consuming, where do they prefer to consume. I think the new dynamic that is now emerging is for us to focus on when. And traditionally, linear network television did not focus on that. By when, I mean there are consumption moments that are happening while you're waiting for your flight to board, while you're in an elevator going up 30 stories, while you're waiting for perhaps to pick up your child from school and you're waiting out. And in those moments from 30 seconds to probably five, six minutes, do you have a form factor that is engaging? That's not just user generated, right? So it's going to be important for networks to think of making derivatives out of their traditional content and figuring out how do you create moments of truth with consumers that are increasingly used now to watching content on different platforms than television and make content that's relevant to them in those bite-sized snackable moments. And who knows, maybe that also leads a crumb trail back to them 
for them to come back onto linear television uh, to watch 24 minute, 50 minute episodic shows once they really find that piece of content compelling. So that's an important new paradigm that we need to focus on. And, and therefore, will we at some point see dedicated YouTube products from you guys, dedicated free fast products as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're already there in those segments because it only makes sense for us to be uh, where the attention is shifting towards. It's just a matter of can you do that without creating much friction with your traditional, yeah, with your existing channels of distribution because that's what's keeping the lights on. Extremely interesting. Um, Sushant, I'm going to move on to you now. Um, you guys are in the S board, T board, A board, and every X board business, right? I mean, you guys do it all at Amazon, right? Um, what are the key, key trends you're seeing across all of these? How, how is the future looking for you? Well, hey, Ashish, thanks a lot. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, what are the key trends that we are seeing across all the VODs that you mentioned? Uh, phenomenal growth would be the good starting point. Uh, I think you talked about a little earlier, uh, you know, video streaming has become a dominant use case for internet by and large in the country. And a lot of this is actually coming from outside the metros. So there is just so much more. At the same time... Sorry, I have to ask you, is the non-metro story genuine? When you say a lot is coming, I know you guys get viewership from some 99% of India's pin codes, something like that. But is it material or is it scattered? How, how big is it overall? Uh, it's incredibly uh, encouraging that... Though I do keep getting asked the question once in a while, what about that 1% pin codes? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that we, you know, somehow, somehow we need to get there. Uh, but the growth has not ebbed in any way, especially from outside the metros, wow. right? Now, here's the thing, uh, and you talked about it as well. Connected TVs are almost as large as pay TV households in the country, right? Digital streaming is almost as large as TV viewing, linear TV viewing in the country. And I remember we spoke about it the last time I was here as well. But here's the important thing. There is no one single customer. Customers sit across a spectrum, right? And a little about the fast conversations that we were just having right now. Customers sit across a spectrum of accessibility, of affordability, of what languages they want to watch entertainment in, what their entertainment needs are. And therefore, for us, when we've thought about building solutions for India, it's always been what all do we need to build as and solutions, not making choices of this or that. So which is exactly where all the VODs that you mentioned, which is what we call the Prime Video Hub, come into play. Right? So you have the Prime subscription video on demand proposition uh, continues to do incredibly well. Uh, India is actually one of the front runners on new customer adoption for Prime Video globally out of all the Prime locales. Our channels proposition, which is where we get add-on subscriptions from partners, uh, is grown phenomenally well. We have the likes of BBC, Discovery, Hoi Choi, more than 20 partners on the service. Movie rentals for customers are not, you know, both for Prime members and also for people who are just looking for a la carte movies, just one-off rental transactions, right? That's been huge. Mini TV, our free ad-supported service, uh, has had almost a 4x jump in watch time. So when we think about how to serve India, uh, the underpinning that we go back to is Customers will always value great value, great selection, and convenience. Uh, it's true for what we do at Amazon overall, and the same holds true for Prime Video as well. It's like almost a new way of segmenting customers. You have a free product, a transaction product, and a Prime uh, subscription product as well. Wow, very interesting. Uh, Sripad, coming to you. Um, out of home, like I spoke about experiential, and we're just seeing this massive resurgence in out of home that's happening including digital resurgence. What's next for out of form? How do smart cities fit in? Is it an urban metro thing, or will it go rural? What do you see happening in digital out of form and overall out of form? Hi, everyone. Hi, good afternoon. Out of form is playing a great role to, for the sustenance of smart cities, because whenever you see any social spaces which includes 
roadside shelters or lavatories or libraries or any basic first mile or last mile connectivity solutions, it is all the responsibility and obligation of out of home player where they invest in the basic infrastructure and out of home is beyond billboards where you will see a lot of data, technology, connectivity and creating smarter solutions including your charging stations, charging pods. So this all is contributing a lot of non-fuel revenue or a non-aero revenue or a, or a non-conventional revenue for the authorities where the private player has an obligation to invest and maintain and create value for the commuters and, and a platform for the brands to reach on a greater scale. As far as the tier 1 or tier 2 cities are concerned because of the 5G highway, I think you will see at par same technology or same kind of solutions across at least top 100 countries across the country and definitely it will grow the better platform for the brand and even for the commuters. I think that's fascinating because the, with at least 45 cities now that are more than a million of population, I think just the potential scope of growing out of home will become absolutely mammoth. I, I, have, a, I have a bit of a follow-up question on this, if I may. Uh, that we saw digital out of home now at about 9%. Just from your gut, in three years, where do you see this going in terms of revenues? See, India is going at a very faster pace. You have rapid metro is more than 2,000 kilometers across the country, 1.5 lakh intracity buses which are flying. You have seen hundreds of airports are getting operational, travel pattern is changing. And all this brings a huge value for the brand and as far as the out of home or digital out of home is concerned. Definitely the QR code philosophy which people have started believing and transactions are happening at a very quicker pace. The data and image analytics is play, playing greater role to give a hygiene to the brand. And there I see this growth of 9% is, is a little bit, a, not a challenge, it will grow at a very fast, faster pace. Everyone is charged and I think the investments are also growing yeah. and the longer longevity of contracts are giving a little bit of a sustenance to the to the players who are investing. And as recently we got listed on on BSC and NSC 20 days back on Valentine's Day. I think that is the best gift what we can give to the media industry as, as, a, as a love towards the media and create values for the cities and making it more beautiful. Super, super. Got a you know, you are the largest broadcaster in the world as per our estimates. I don't think anyone creates as much content, has so many stations and channels as you have. And you also run Free Dish, which is the largest distribution platform on the planet as well. 45 million homes is our estimate of, you know, this incredible product. Where do you see this going? What's the future of free television for a country like India? Well, on the uh, set of boxes, while there's a you know, continuing debate that the number of cord cutters is increasing and the industry is shrinking and you know, the numbers uh, that came in in your report also, uh, Friedrich has been growing continuously and consistently. Now, 2003, when uh, Friedrich started, the industry was in a very, very nascent uh, stage. It really uh, you know, set the context for the rest of the industry to grow and develop. And in the first few years, the situation was such that uh, we actually had to call uh, broadcasters, ki bhai slot hai, apna channel dal do iske upar. And then, uh, you know, till about two to three years back, the industry grew uh, to large numbers. 210 million is the number that we have for TV homes. And then our revenues were at a certain level, say just under 800 crores. And we were looking at ways to grow that uh, without uh, really compromising on the uh, number of channels that we were able to offer. 
but we did a, a little bit of tweak in our methodology and in one year itself the revenue uh, jumped by close to about 45 46% and the same trend has been maintained this year as well so what i see is that uh, you know while the uh, other media are growing rapidly but uh, set top boxes are also here to stay and they are well settled well entrenched and at least for the foreseeable future uh, they are going to grow as well so uh, i mean the numbers that we have now 45 million or so we have uh, these are uh, only estimates because we are not a subscriber led uh, set top box system non addressable uh, system uh, but we see that maybe the number would grow to somewhere from maybe 50 to 60 million at least in the next four to five years wow. and then uh, subsequently depending on how the other technologies uh, fare uh, it'll be it'll still be around and uh, we'll take a call on that maybe after another five to six years that's a fantastic prognosis uh, for free television um, i'm coming back to you kevin all right um, and, and this is really interesting as, as, a, as a company which runs a traditional broadcasting business and digital platforms. Um, what are the biggest opportunities that you see? And also, what are the challenges that you see? Are you going to end up focusing more on some and less on some? How is it going to work for you? So let me say, I'm saying is, I wouldn't say traditional or digital. I'm saying is, the way we look at ourselves is we are a content company, right? In the end of the day, the figures that you put up of the screens, whether it is CTV, pay TV, free TV, or even the phones. We are agnostic to all of that. I'm saying the good thing is the number of screens are growing. And it is for us to create, see how we can create content across all these screens, point one. Point two is uh, most media companies, I'm saying successful media companies, keep a very close tab on the consumer. Uh, we would, I'm saying is on a monthly basis, at least visit thousands of consumers, and even more through social listening, right? And what's most important is to try and find out what, is, what are their choices, what's the kind of content they want. But more important is how they want it, where they want it, and when they want it, right? And I think so that's the difference for us. The way we look at the whole business is saying that create content, and people will consume it on different screens. If I have to give you a good example, uh, Big Boss. Big Boss is one of the biggest reality shows that we have. And it plays across TV and digital, right? And at least around about 30% of our viewership comes on the digital platform, right? Another big learning is we talk about uh, digital, but nearly 60 to 70% of viewership comes on Geo Cinema at the same time it plays on TV at 10 o'clock in the night, right? And that's the big difference. So now it's a question of what else do you know and give them? We would give them something before TV. Right? and give them a feed before TV. So create content which suits each of the platforms is how we look at it as a company. And different windows as well. Absolutely. For, at, yeah. okay. Sandhya, and that brings me to, I think, the most important question. In my presentation, you saw we said that advertising actually grew slower than GDP for the first time in, our, in the last 15 years except for COVID. But digital grew 15% despite everything. What are some of the trends you're seeing from a digital advertising perspective? I'll sort of keep it to media and entertainment and you know we'll talk about this industry and I think one of the studies that we did with uh, BCG um, recently and uh, in fact if you go to the meta booth you'll get uh, a little pack a, a little uh, um, you know cue card that gives you all the details of that study I highly encourage you to look at it the three things that we've seen one is that a lot of the searching for what is being viewed, whether it's on OTT or linear TV or wherever else, is happening digitally. So almost 60% of people research content before they decide what to watch. Um, and 80% uh, of that research is happening online. So, uh, and that's it's pretty significant and has implications on your presence across digital platforms, not just ours, right? Because that's where you get your reach. What we saw with this movie that we that recently launched, Fighter, was they used our platform and our assets super well, and they got to around 40% of their target audience with just trailers that they did on Reels. So that was uh, that's one trend. So I think it's important to think about uh, having digital platforms as a part of uh, your uh, reach strategy when you're in this uh, when you want content uh, to be seen 
The second thing I would say is that there was a time when the consumer was different for, you know, linear TV versus, uh, you know, what they were uh, consuming on streaming or elsewhere, and that has all collapsed, right? So the consumer is one. They just watch at different platforms based on where they are, and I think Arjun talked about that a, a bit. And so I think it's really important to think about a holistic way in which you're reaching this consumer across all platforms, uh, not just one. And you're seeing that also pan out in the trends that you're seeing in growth. And uh, I think um, I think the M&E sector doesn't use us as effectively as they should. So it's a lot of teams work with us closely, but I think there's more that we could be doing in terms of how we uh, how we get to that um, consumer. The third thing I would say is, on our platforms especially, one of the things that we've seen is people want interactivity, they want engaging content. So it's not enough, you know, just to put something out there that's very passive. It really boosts your chances of engaging a lot more with the audience if it's interactive. Let me give you again an example. For Fighter, we had Hrithik Roshan asking people to chat with him on WhatsApp. And we ended up getting a lot of interest because people were responding to that and messaging. Similarly, our ARFX on Fighter got used around 45,000 times. I think it was used. Uh, simple game of you know actually using AR to engage the audience on the Fighter set it gave them an, a peek into that. The third thing is just you know what we did. Um, with message, not with messaging, but with event reminders. And this translates directly into ticket buying. So people set reminders for when the movie would come out on, on our platforms, and around 1,50,000 people set reminders, and 60,000 of them actually clicked to buy a ticket. So it is a mix of engagement via transaction, via interactivity, that we are heading towards, very non-FCT forms of traditional advertising, if I may say. Yeah. That, that seems to be what you're talking about, yeah, very I'd interesting. Yeah, I'd say don't be passive. You know, when you have the platform that provides that, use it. It doesn't cost a ton. Got yeah. it. Got it. Arjun, as someone who owns some phenomenal IP, and you spoke about IP even in your first answer, how do you see the importance of syndication of content over the next four or five years? So, uh, Ashish, you know, we live in a world that's flush with content, and there's little time for us to consume it, to be honest, right? And therefore, getting really high quality content is the holy grail for every platform that's seeking to acquire customers and retain them. Um, as a studio, I think that produces a lot of decorated content. It makes a lot of, it makes for good business sense and strategy for us therefore to ally with such distribution platforms who can amplify and give us the scale and the reach where m more number of audiences are able to uh, engage, consume our content, right? And therefore, we've got flourishing partnerships with GeoCinema, with Amazon Prime Video, and several other OTT platforms, as well as other form factors. We've got it with DTH operators, we are now going and getting into deals with, we already have a deal with Samsung TV Plus, for instance, and because the connected TV paradigm and fast consumption is increasing, so it makes sense for us to be there in those um, in those distribution more vehicles. More important. As That's the right. Platforms multiply, syndication has to grow. It does. Exactly. Now, it, it's also, you know, they, if you look at it, their primary goal is they look at content either as an acquisitive tool to acquire customers or for customer engagement, right? And, and therefore, getting access to first party data is really its paramount because we therefore get insights into who is consuming what. What do they like? What's the audience profile? How can, we, uh, how can we kind of tweak future renditions of the second season so that it's consumed better? And therefore, we always work with them to get access to information, limited information. But if it's our own distribution platforms, we have much more complete information. And the last thing that I'll say on this is, again, the new emerging paradigm is as content syndicators and licensors, we need to also see this growing class of user-generated content. Right? How can we engage with them so that some of our content is available to them to then make use of and build you know, on top of that for their millions of followers. Very interesting. So Very interesting. that's a new avenue that we explore. Super. Shripad, I'm going to go back to you. He, you know, uh, Arjun spoke about data and using data. And, and out of home is something traditionally not always associated with very accurate data. Do you see any of that changing over the next few years? As far as 
data already we have started mapping with the image analytics which has been certified by IIC Bangalore where with through the one data definitely it will grow and give more transparency for the for the investment from the brands and even for the uh, the, the media which is inside the airports or on the malls, definitely the segregation of uh, gender, the age, is, is all happening there. We have the solutions, we are reaching out to the brands, we are convincing them to, to, to test that and implement that. And a lot of them has, uh, has shared their views around that and it's, it's improving day by day and definitely it will add a lot of value for all the stakeholders to bring more transparency and more hygiene to grow on a faster pace, yeah. Great. Um, Sushant, a quick question from you, um, and, and this is a little uh, scary, if I may. That typically we've noticed that if TV is being produced at X rupees per hour, OTT is like a 10X, right? Uh, you guys bought a lot of films last year at some pretty nice prices as well, over the last two, three years. Is this trend of high cost content going to continue, or do you see that coming down? <laughs> Quick show of hands. How many of you are looking forward to the next season of Mirzapur, Family Man, or Panchayat? Ah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's important to place in context uh, the fact that our investment thesis, Ashish, is built on building this category over a very, very long period of time. That's a time horizon that we operate with for most of our investments, all of our investments at Amazon, and the same holds true for Prime Video. So, that's one. The second is we want to create the category of great cinematic storytelling and customers valuing that great cinematic storytelling. And we realize that creating that ecosystem across the board, not just as a platform, but creators, the technical ecosystem, is an investment that is well made. So we are very excited about what we have seen. And ten poles matter, therefore. Always. Ten poles absolutely matter, as the crowd has spoken loud and clear. The other thing, Ashish, is our investment thesis is, again, look, we look at it through the lens of how we bring in customers to enjoy this multi-benefit proposition called Prime, which is a unique, distinctive sort of proposition for customers, Prime Video being a part of that. So that changes how customers evaluate, you know, what is value for money, right? And that just, you know, that gives us the impetus to continue to make investments. And finally, I do want to say that, you know, we want to make all the great stories that we can, but we realize that you know, there's only so many stories that we can make. So we are always excited about the partnerships that we can forge uh, with creators, with channel partners, to build out a true video entertainment marketplace that is not reliant on just us and our investments into the ecosystem, but really makes Prime Video the preferred entertainment destination, irrespective of whether it's us who's creating that content or whether we have partners who are doing it. And uh, I mean, the fact that we have almost 100 projects right now in various stages of development wow. uh, should, should give you an indication that, you know, the last seven years have been a good indication of the appetite for the Indian customer. projects in the pipeline is, I think, what everyone's taking away from here. I think there's a lot of content demand happening. Last question, uh, Gaurav, for you. You're the sole man standing on stage from a radio point of view, right? FM radio, AM radio. Are these the things of the past? Do you see this continuing in the future? Sorry, I've got my worst questions for you. Sorry about that. <laughs> well, the audience must know that before the session started, uh, Ashish told me to stand up for radio. So <laughs> should I stand up? <laughs> the, I think this is a continuing kind of a debate which we keep hearing all the time that uh, you know, this new thing has come up so will the previous one survive? I mean, right from, you know, the spoken word to the written word to the silent films or radio and then talkies and movies and OTT, and digital media, streaming media, whatever. Every single one of them still survives. Every single one. There, is, there isn't any, I mean, other than possibly, you know, uh, maybe hieroglyphics, uh, you know, carved on stone, uh, that's possibly because nobody's been able to decipher them yet, or the Rosetta Stone probably. But uh, every single one of those means of communication survives. And there are certain uh, situations, there are certain uh, times 
when whether you like it or not there would be content consumption in a particular form only where the other forms just do not work i mean would you watch a movie when you go out to jog in the morning you won't i mean you you want to listen to music fine you have your uh, uh, earphones or whatever you know you you scroll through your news feeds and see that uh, you know everybody tells you that bef- one hour before you sleep turn off all screens right but you want to consume content what form do you want to consume it in i mean you can read a book yes but if you want to turn off the light you can listen to music you can listen to a podcast There's and a the space. number there is a space and there, there is will there be a is space. i think not just a space there is a growing space it's a growing space otherwise we won't have the very large number of uh, content producers and you know self content uh, creators who are putting out their content not only in video but also in audio forms across i think most of the platforms we would see that just pure play audio podcasts are a growing sector got it so so i don't think i mean it's it's a matter of you know whether you are doing it as a streaming or a broadcasting mode i mean that's a debate we can have but uh, the space for radio always remains it has remained Very and true. i think it will persist fantastic okay we're out of time so i'm going to ask one last question from all of you which is what is your mantra for 2024 in one word only okay so that makes it a lot more fun so shripad starting with you what's your mantra for 2024 dynamism dynamism very good it's Sushant. not going to be a word it's going to be uh, a phrase uh, our mantra for 2024 is it's till day one got it super sadhya um i think for us um, for me at least it's urgency india's at this huge inflection point and it's amazing growth that's happening everywhere so urgency urgency that's In very interesting and how we show up wow got it we are spread across multiple media from radio tv digital and so on and so forth so i think the first thing that we would do is to consolidate and then subsequently play on our strengths consolidation play on strengths sir would you like to take a stab at it as well mr jaju times up okay <laughs> kevin we are navigating a period of relentless change and for me what's going to be utmost is going to be agility and agility. flexibility flexibility and agility very interesting arjun rounding it off with you um experimentation we need to be there in so many different places that we've not been so lovely i think this is just fantastic you have agility you have experimentation dynamism which just shows the quantum of change that we are going through in this industry and with that i think we are very out of time i've got many many dirty messages written over here from the producers i will take your leave thank you very much panel you've been outstanding ladies and gentlemen please put together your hands for a wonderful session ladies and gentlemen once again a big round of applause for our panelists our uh, uh, we can do a photo op guys gentlemen ma'am yes we'll, we'll come forward for a photo op please Thank you for that insight and please don't go anywhere because we have an amazing amazing discussion uh with uh, Ms Rani Mukherjee starting shortly Such an insightful discussion no Absolutely. That's true you know after Netflix I actually do jump to podcast or sometimes music content just doesn't end does it it doesn't end and it also continues with amazon and uh, by committing <laughs> true boot <laughs>